And we said, now that we know how our best in class think and behave, um, and we know that's what's led them to be best in class, what is the rest of our field doing? And how do they compare? Let's see who's employing these practices that we recognize as best in class, and if it contributes to their success. So we're, we don't have an answer to that big question yet, but we have all the pieces that are going to build that answer. We went into the survey with um, five main areas of inquiry. We wanted to understand how people rated themselves and how they thought they were doing on internal communications within their company. We wanted to size up their challenges. Um, we wanted to see if they recognized the same importance behind um, the many factors that our best in class um, communicators recognize as important. And we wanted to see who was doing them. If they weren't doing them, we wanted to see if they thought they might be in the near future. Um, and also, too, we wanted to see what their priorities were for, for the future. So those are the, the five big areas. Um, and I'm going to share with you some of what we are seeing um, within that data. I'm going to start with talking about what our top challenges are. We, our group, um, our working group came up with a host of different challenges that we thought were relevant to the space, and we asked our individuals to rank them first, second, and third. And what we are seeing is four challenges bubble to the top. Adequate staff, uh, the pace of our world, um, the nature of our business operating across multiple brands, given that we're talking to global communicators, this is very much a reality, um, and uh, managing up and having a leader that understands the value of employee communications, which I will mention was um, implicit in almost all of the um, IDIs that, in, in all the in-depth interviews and the qualitative phase that we conducted. Other challenges resonated, but not nearly as much um, as these top four. And in the full analysis, we'll be able to see um, who suffers more from these challenges and, and who doesn't. Um, so it's something that I think we're allowed, we'll keep our eye on. Um, we also wanted to size up where people felt that they are. And this is, um, this is actually really interesting. What I'm going to show you, again, this is preliminary data. So there could be some movement here and there. But what we're seeing right now, if you take a look at this slide, is that when people rate themselves, they're actually recognizing some of their weaknesses. We asked them to rate a whole host of um, their, their, their performance on a whole host of different measurements on a one to 10 scale, where one is the most negative, seven is the, I'm sorry, one is the most negative, seven is the most positive on a one to seven scale. Um, we asked them to evaluate their efficacy in project evaluation. We asked them to evaluate um, their uh, ability to align with corporate goals, them to meet their own goals. Um, and we asked them to evaluate how well they contribute to the success of the organization. So seven would be absolute alignment, one would be complete disalignment. And what we're seeing is whereas both scores right now are coming in above that halfway mark, we're actually seeing a little gap from the high end of the scale positive to that, that to where they are, especially for efficacy and, and evaluation, um, goal setting efficacy, and actually what surprised me a little bit too um, was the team feeling like they were contributing to the success of the organization. So this is something we're gonna keep our eye on, um, and we'll be able to see how this moves based on the tools and practices that individuals have adopted within their organization. And, and if I could just add to that, one of the things that we were intrigued to see with the responses to this particular question is, would we get truthful answers? Would people just say, we're doing great, whether they're doing great or not? And so the fact that, they, uh, that we have some numbers here which are uh, well below seven indicates that the responses that we're getting are pretty accurate. Yeah, and you're looking at averages here, and I think they'll fluctuate a little bit as we, as we um, go through. But. So, um, as I mentioned, our qualitative research unearthed what our best in class considered to be most important. Um, we wanted to put that to the test and we wanted to see um, what the rest of our industry felt uh, was important. And for almost about half of the measurements that um, the factors that are best in class told us were important, the rest of our, of our industry gets. They understand that it's important to listen and learn from employees, to roadmap organizational changes, to assess, um, to connect the internal communications department into the larger company structure, to participate in overall strategy, um, you know, to let employees know what to expect of organizational change. Here, the importance is readily recognized, no issue. 
what we see is there's a collection of other factors where the importance actually isn't as apparent right now. And these were things that our best in class told us really contributed to their success. Um, and we're seeing that there's, you know, not, the importance isn't readily apparent when it comes to listening to all stakeholders um, or communicating the impact of organizational change or challenging the next um, generation to contribute to organizational growth or even leveraging those closest to your employees at the line of sight managers as communicators. There's some gaps there. Um, and what I'm gonna show you actually might shock you a little bit now. Um, after we asked how important these things were, we asked individuals if they were doing them and if they, if they were practicing them. And what we saw actually is that, and again, this is preliminary, it might move a little bit, but the only two factors that most are practicing now um, is having that team lead report in to <coughs> the communications leader and have employees informed in a timely fashion. Those are really the only two. When we sort of take down our standards and say, okay, well, what are a lot of people doing right now? We see some more. We see, we see periodic assessment. We see keeping employees informed about the content of the issue at hand, knowing to expect more organizational change, um, adopting an authentic voice to the organization. So we see some more there, um, but we don't have, we're not, we're not upwards of 70% on any of these yet. Again, that can fluctuate a little bit, um, but it's, it's more of a, a lot of them are doing, not most of 